You're all good to start. Uh, welcome back to C Mining Society. My name is Chaz Rogers, and I'm here with the one and only Clayton Thomas. But do know him better as C D. My guy, how are you, man? I'm great, bro. How Thanks you for doing? Me, man. I'm honored. What? Shut I'm up. honored Shut and up. humbled to be on your show. Stop it. I am. You're not. Yo, you know what's so funny? I genuinely am because I'm always the one inviting people to do my thing. Yeah. So when I get invited to do somebody's thing, I'm like, <laughs> what? You you're, I mean? you're you were on my. I had like. The Daddy Issues crew first, uh-huh. um, you know, because I... Definitely not looking forward to trying to get a part of that. Or well, the Daddy Issues yeah. crew, don't. Because you got to be a daddy to be Yeah, honest. don't. Because people are like, can I get on the show? I'm like, you ain't got no kids. I barely made it. <laughs> Your daughter Pure is accident. amazing, man. She's cool, man. She's a lot of fun now. I realize I'm a, I like this age. She's yeah. at, she, I mean, the tantrums be something, but... Of course, she's, you know, yeah. little girl. But I was like, I'm going to miss when she's this age. Because every time I see her, she gets a little longer, and I'm like, dang, yo, you're getting big. Bro, like, when, so long. my birthday, when y'all are there, and she gives me a hug, y'all about to leave. She mm-hmm. gives me the hug, and you said something in Spanish. Besos. And she kissed me on the cheek. It melted my heart, bro. <laughs> I was like... Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. She was so sweet. She's That's a sweetheart the best, now. Man. She's a sweetheart now. And then when she's tired, yo. Remember the little gremlins when they get wet? Uh, the um, <laughs> the little Furby dudes when they. That's when she gets wet, bro. She gets I tired. We watch Gremlins. Oh, it was great. I watched it not too long ago with her, and she was like, "Ew, yeah, scary." But she's... That's because the prosthetics and everything was more realistic then. It was, oh, it was no great. computer or anything. No, it was I great back it. then. It was great back then. Movies were better. Yes, I said it. TV They're shows, trying to redo Gremlins cartoons. too. They're supposed to. They're supposed to do a, a reboot of Gremlins, Ghostbusters again, and oh, oh, the one I, Future, uh, Back to the Future. Well, no, more yeah. on the end one. Uh, however, yeah, uh, it's crazy, Cam. I know. Gremlins can be done only if they go back to prosthetics and real makeup, no CGI. You know it's going to be CGI. I know. Uh, <laughs> what was the second one you said after Gremlins? Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters again. Ghostb- so Ghostbusters was supposed to come out last year. Right. But then, you know, everything right, right. happened. So I don't know. Isn't it like a prequel or something like that? No, it's it's a sequel in that same universe. Oh, sequel. That's right. That's yeah. Right, that's right. So that's going to be the sons. It's the like. That's Cam on the mic, yeah. by the way, people, because exactly. Cam hates the camera for some Cam reason. Cam hates the camera. He will not get on the camera. camera. Bro, but yeah, that I would. I'm not mad at Ghostbusters because the <clears throat> Ghostbusters that we saw before, I didn't see the all uh, female led one. I saw it. Yeah, I ha- I love some parts in it. Uh-huh. But overall, and here's Jones. why I didn't like it, bro. First of all, shout out to all the women involved in that incredible right. opportunity for you Kate guys. McKinnon. The reason I didn't like it is because they didn't set them up well, mm-hmm. right? It was like they created Ghostbusters in a new universe. Mm-hmm. And even Bill Murray's cameo Mm -hmm. was that of a doctor on TV. Mm -hmm. He wasn't a Ghostbuster. Mm -hmm. If they would have done Dan Aykroyd, Bill Mm -hmm. Murray, um, you know, a lot of the original cast, Ernie Hudson. Yeah, because some boy died. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Egon died. They would have done it like them passing the torch Mm -hmm. like, yo. Rick Moranis would have came in that piece. We can't do this anymore. We need some help. And then the girls come in or they're the daughters or something. Mm -hmm. That would have been dope. But the way they set it up was trash. So I couldn't really support it fully but yeah. i did enjoy um, some parts yeah man i love uh you're a big movie guy yes uh well let me tell you about the show first okay cool. all right so see minus society you know my I'm whole so background happy to see you man oh, thank you man <laughs> go ahead see go see my society. see my society so you know my whole background about uh you know the homelessness blah blah blah, blah oh blah, we know you every, every <laughs> everybody's here and heard me say it a thousand times uh <laughs> so pretty much you know, and then you know me and uh, your wife Tanja. Of course, we always talk books and stuff like yeah. that. So, you know, it's always my quest to get better and improve. Yeah. So on this show, uh, the whole point is to have people come on and they see because people have a thousand excuses why I don't reach their goal for some reason. Oh. Right? There's always something. So I wanted to show people. I wanted to bring on successful people, mm. and I wanted to say their journey, their story, what kind of, you know, the things that stopped us, but how you how you get over your practices, your mm. discipline, all that other stuff. And it's a show about, uh, for me, I always say it's uh, getting out of your way in real time. So I, people get to see me be a bum, be homeless, and mm-hmm. actually producing and getting taking the steps necessary to get where you want to be. So, Brother, the stuff that you, we were talking about before we went live, I'm literally gleaming hearing you speak about it because I'm like, listen to you, man. Yeah, you know man. what I'm saying? Like all of the things that you've worked so hard. I watched you put the work in over here and literally grind and sleepless nights. And you're like, no, I want it. Yeah. I want it. I want it. And now fast forward, not even 
not even five years. If anything, it's been four. I don't count last year because nothing happened last year. I mean, nothing did happen last year. So four years, yeah. and it's like the world bro, did pause. Yeah, it's crazy. no, it's good stuff. Um, and what I don't get to tell people is that how big of a part of that you are because outside of coming on family time, me, you, Jamie Nieto, Ryan Loomis, <laughs> Markel, yes, Palmer. Who else? Was that it? No. You talking about in the room? In the very, very beginning. Oh, in the, the very, very beginning. beginning. This is before Janelle. Before everybody. Okay. Uh, it was just us. Yeah, it was just us. And and Charles. Charles. Alan. Much love to Dion Lack. Dion. And yep. And feel, I'm getting somebody. I think that was bro. it. Because then we brought Mark. I was doing all the writing, then Markel came in. No, me, you, and Markel were the first. Yeah. And then Jamie. But I'm talking, we're missing somebody. Was it a... Uh, because Orin and them came later. Janelle came later. That's what it was. They came later. Yeah, Orin everybody came later. Yeah. A gang of people came later. They, man, that room was <laughs> crazy. Like 14 deep in that Jesus. piece. Jesus. It used to be so hot. Hot. It's mad hot. But uh, but that was the beginning of that. That was like, yo, we're going to go and we're going to just work, work, work. And yeah. we're going to take this thing to the next level. So, yo. And then you were already so versed in story and i mean that's just from you being in the room with mm. with ben and working on the show so you know i just learned that was it just l- shut up and listen you Man, know it's the best that way was, to be <laughs> that was my because <laughs> remember people would kind of go against what you said and i was like <sighs> the other, i remember one time specifically i was like we should actually listen to clayton i was like who do you remember that i was like who's been here the longest who? <laughs> oh my god <laughs> <laughs> But people don't understand. But, you know, our feelings and stuff. You, know, you taught me a valuable lesson about being married to stuff early oh on. Oh, my God. With the greatest roast in room. Ben still says it. <laughs> <laughs> the most humbling roast I've ever had in a writer's room. Say it. Mm-mm. <laughs> <laughs> so, look. Hey, Clayton hit me with the greatest. Oh, man. Roast. We're in a writer's room. And... Uh, <laughs> Ben's going to like I had I wrote something. Ben, yeah. didn't, ben didn't want it to do it, and I was like, yeah, but such and such, but such and such, but such and such, such and such. Ben was like, no, 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 but such and such, such and such. I'm Kept going I'm, pitching the exact same thing over. It was and already over. written, and I thought it worked. Whew. And then uh, Clayton was like, hey, Chaz, uh, where's the wedding? And I was like, what wedding? He was like, the wedding to that script you're married to. <laughs> I was like, ah, and the room cracked up. It was Jesus uh, because as writers, bro, as <laughs> <laughs> As writers, and I, I hated Clayton. We fought after that. I try my <laughs> best to tell every writer this, man. It's like stop being married to stuff because right. number one, it's gonna change right. throughout the process before it even gets to screen. Right. You know what I mean? In fact, the thing that you really want in a script, don't fight for it. Pitch it when you get on set or pitch it down the line, right. and it could be a brand new idea. Right. But we get so caught on, and it changes the energy of a room too. Yeah, no doubt. It's like you're like you keep pitching this joke, you keep pitching the joke. Not you, but I'm saying overall. Right. And then when it gets shot down, then people are like, uh, they don't really now they don't want you can't laugh. They don't want you to laugh. Like yeah. you're not laughing anymore. It's like not a room energy is weird because you got disappointed. Yeah. And not everybody feels it. So now it's like, hey, what about this? And it's like you might be like, yeah, that's, that's cool. <laughs> like energy is just different. It changes for sure, yeah. and it shouldn't, but. You know, you, you get a chance also to cultivate the room culture. We got a chance yeah. to do that and make it what we wanted to be. And I think that it's still carried on that way. Great now. energy. Yeah. It's great energy. And uh but no, man, those are lessons you've learned, like, yeah, man, I it was it's like it's kind of the best lesson also. Because then you you need enough you're young and you're stupid and you want your way and you think yeah. you know everything <laughs> for anything. Yeah. And I was like 30, but it's my first time in a writer's room. I'm yeah. like, yeah, man, that, 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 that. what is eating? That's old school, right? <laughs> what is eating? That's old school. <laughs> and then you get the big delicious piece of humble pie, uh, and, but it changes your outlook on something. Yeah. You go like, oh, great lesson learned, you know? Bro, like Stacey Evans Morgan used to do this for me every time we were in a room early on. So mm-hmm. I didn't even make certain mistakes, right? Mm-hmm. Like I never was married to anything because like Stacy would be like like as everybody was pitching, Stacy would be like, "So what you want to do is like if if you see on the screen how that goes, that joke mm-hmm. doesn't work anymore because we changed something yeah. in a later scene." And we're like, "Oh, right." Mm-hmm. And then uh somebody will pitch a joke and she'll be like, <laughs> "Nice." And I'm like, "Oh, that's being married to something." Mm-hmm. And that like I said changes the energy of a room and it's like it makes the other writers look at you like, yo, fam. Hey, fam, back up, dog. Yo. You get it, yeah. 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 I remember Ben told me, he was like, I didn't know if I liked you in the beginning. <laughs> I get it now. Back, Looking yeah. back, you get it. You be yeah. like, oh, I feel you, fam. But Bentley is the coolest. Bentley 
is the opposite of Nile, mm -hmm. right? Nile Evans is great dude, amazing. I love him. Right. I love the entire Evans family. Nile will tell you straight up, that's not funny. You're Move right. on. And you be like, <laughs> Jesus. Bentley will let you down yeah. and make you still feel creative. Uh, and encouragement, and you'll yes. get all that. Uh, Nile does uh, Wildin' Out. Uh, oh shit, Season 16 yeah, just finished. Congratulations to them. Congratulations, He's a movie fam. writer, TV writer, yeah, TV show runner. Incredible. Let's Google him. Candle maker. Candle maker. Come uh, on, man. Uh, trained. Uh, what is it? He's a uh, certified... Um, um, what, gun, a gun instructor? Yeah, gun instructor, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. You got to come shooting with us, bro. Come oh, shoot. uh, bro, I can't. Yeah, you can, dog. Come I shoot with us. I would love to, actually. Come shoot with I us. I would love to. I want to go this to. weekend. Uh, this will... Okay, so Sunday is a no-go. I like how we're Saturday doing this right is, here. I'm, hey, Saturday, <laughs> I'm open. Where? What area do y'all go? Uh, and It's uh, New Hall. Where is that? That's like little past Silmar. It's up a little bit. It's like 20 minutes from the studio. Not even 20 minutes from so It's probably like 15 from the studio. So it's 20 minutes for me to get here. Mm -hmm. So it, would you also say it's an additional 20 minutes from I'll here? I'll probably say another 10. Okay. So probably like 30. Okay. Well worth it, bro. Okay. And you know what? On me, fam. What? Come on. I got you. Shaz. On me. Guns on me, baby. I'm there. <laughs> I can't wait now. Bullets on me, what fam. What time? I don't know yet. We got to go early because it's going to be hot. So we got to go like around 10. Ah, all right, cool. <laughs> okay. I appreciate you being here at 930, fam. Hey, man. I hear Clayton was like, hey, I know you're not a morning person. <laughs> <laughs> Clay, Clayton used to sleep into noon or later all the time. Oh, my God. That Literally. That was because I don't I don't have to get up unless I have to get up. Right. So it's like, all right, hold on. Like, we got to stop. We, we haven't talked in a while, so we're doing a lot of catching up yeah, here. Yeah. But, uh, oh, you got topics. I'm sorry. Yeah, let's get to the meat of the show. So like I said, it's about, uh, it's about you and... Um, your work ethic, uh, the things you do to separate yourself. Because I always say this as a person you see in your head mm -hmm. and as a person you're trying to get to, you know? And so it's like, what are those steps you're taking to be that person You when you close your eyes and you see your wildest dreams and just chasing that, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, so uh, I have not have the, I have the, my screen is red now. That's beautiful. Because uh, I have been, the, the blue, I found out the blue eye lights has been killing my eye, my left eye. Hmm. So now is that is this blue eye lights? Yeah, most lights, most phones and TVs are like all lights have a blue yeah uh, channel of light coming from it. Uh, really? Just because I mean, if you look at the uh, color white, if you break it down, it's the Roy G. Biv. Mm -hmm. So there's always a blue channel coming from uh, any source of light. So yeah. how do I get the red screen? I'll show you. All right, I had you to can do it actually. Myself. There's a flux mode on your phone. You can change it to it'll uh, alter. The, it'll basically decrease the amount of blue that's coming through it, and it'll actually change the color temperature. So yeah. things will look a little like tinted orange or yellow, mm -hmm. and that's supposed to help you. So, and but, that wasn't enough for me. I was doing that first, and that wasn't enough. It was still killing me. Well, I'm going to start there. Yeah. It's well, not yeah. actually bad for your eyes. Uh -huh. it's, what it does is it keeps you awake. When you it see blue light, it's, yeah. it's, uh, your brain recognizes it as sunlight because mm -hmm. sunlight is actually tinted more blue mm -hmm. than it is orange. Exactly. So that Can't tells help. your brain to stay awake. Mm. So that's why they say don't go on your phone, don't watch mm -hmm. TV when you're going to bed because your brain's now been like hit with the stimuli that's telling you to be like, be awake, be awake, be awake. That makes sense. Yeah, I didn't so, know that. Yeah, it that was just killing. Sense. My eye was just watering a lot, uh -huh. and it was like swollen. It was swelling. Like mm. I was getting a Forrest Whitaker eye, and I was like, I do not want to be this guy. You know? Oh my god! <laughs> yes, Great impression with I the eye. Wanna, I don't want to be that guy. You're walking wow. around. Oh, I don't know. You can do that. something, Daniel. I don't want. <laughs> I don't want to be. Oh. Uh. What's what is it? What's Godfather of Harlem? I didn't want to be that guy. Godfather of Harlem was a good show. That's a great show. That's a, I, haven't, I haven't seen season two yet. Me neither. Uh, I'm waiting until the end so I can. Exactly. Yeah. My yo was like, "Yeah, we watch my. No, we gotta wait. All right, because if they catch me on that cliffhanger, I'm gonna be mad. A hot. Yeah. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, Clayton. Uh, CT. Thank you. <laughs> Jesus, he hit me with like eight of them. I'm like, I'm gonna stall him out. Hey, you know what? Because I know you from the beginning. Yeah. Here's the thing that I always say: I never mind. The people who know me, one, in real life, and two, the people who've known me for a long time, right. saying my name is Cat. I don't care. Right. We talk off air. I don't care. Right. But when it's like on camera, it's like, look, man, the brand is The this. brand is CT. I we get that. We gotta, yeah. I get that. And uh, and I respect that. I appreciate so. that, brother. That'd be like uh, somebody calling me Chasman all the time. I'm not like, I would never do it. Actually, you do, though. But not, not on, on camera. camera. No. <laughs> not on camera. But I think there was a time. I think it's still a time. What? I don't think you've called me just Chaz straight up. <laughs> no. <and I> <laughs> No, sir, because that name is so innocent. Oh, because it's like Chaz. Is this is this our camera? Or is the which this one? Chaz is literally like 
we're the same. I think you might actually be older than me. I'm a, I think I'm a few months older than you. Yeah, so it's like mm-hmm. I'll be 36 in October. Yeah, you're older than me. Mm-hmm. So it's like Chaz is older than me, but he's like everybody's little brother. Like we <laughs> love Chaz. Like every time I've ever done anything, I'm like Chaz, can you come? And you know, until you start getting busy, and yeah. then you're like, yeah, oh, yeah, I, yeah. I can't. Yeah, maybe some other time. I don't feel like I was just leaving my domicile. I hate leaving now. Mm-hmm. Like I used to love being now. Now I'm like, oh, I don't want to go. He blamed it on a baby at first. Oh, man. it was great. He's like, oh man, the baby, the baby. Nah. Now he just says. No. no. I was like, okay. Well, then COVID hit, so you have that excuse, and now it's coming off of that. Yeah. And you can ride that out for probably another six months. Uh, I, I just fake anxiety. I, I don't like going to have anxiety. People, man, I've been around. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Ah, you guys know me, man. <laughs> uh, you know, and then you get to be this guy who doesn't yeah. I don't want to hit Chaz. But then, but then you don't want to be too antisocial because no way he's you for nothing. That's that's the, that's the, the double edge. So that you got to say yes to shit every now and then. You'd be like, all right, it's a it's an event. Let me like your birthday and all that good stuff. I've been branded now to where people know certain things, so yeah. I don't get the invites. Period. So it's like it's like this. They know I don't like coming out during the daytime. <laughs> so any day events, it's a wrap, right? Yeah. And then it becomes like, oh, we're doing a party. Ah, oh, CT don't like parties. Mm-hmm. But I do like a kick it session. Right. Like if it's like a yo, we're doing a game night, I'm mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. We're uh there the music's gonna be on, but it's not gonna be super loud. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. there. Right. But if it's like, yo, we're celebrating and of it's course. gonna be loud, I'm like, ah. I know. It depends on what it is. I'll be like, what? I'll go. Yeah, I'll get there early yeah. and leave early, right. but I won't. I can't get there when it's too cracking because right. then I can't even have a conversation. My baby is the best excuse, bro. She's the best. I'd be like, <laughs> oh, man, I got to get back home to the baby, you know? Oh, man, got to get back. Get home, don't even talk to her. <laughs> <laughs> Papa, watch out. <laughs> go. <laughs> go watch. She's, uh, just go watch YouTube. She watches everything on YouTube now. That's adorable. That's crazy. All right, here we go. You ready? Mm-hmm. Uh, CT, where do you see yourself in 5, 10, and 20 years from now? Um, 20 years from now, I actually see myself as uh, 20 years from now will make me 55. I see me well into having Just getting started. my child. I'm on a long-running CBS show. Is that your child? <clears throat> The show? No, no, no. A physical child. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, the physical child is probably, like, <laughs> 10 at that time, okay. you know, Lord willing. Um, really stress-free life. I tour mm-hmm. occasionally. Okay, you, you do know some one-nighters saying? here and there? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm probably also the voice of a, of a kid's cartoon. Love it. Um, What's it called? I don't know. That's is it not, your kid cartoon? No, no, no. You're no just, I'm just the voice of Okay. It. You're just a hired gun? Yeah. I okay. feel like at that point in my life, I'll just be... I'll do what I want, like mm-hmm. hired. I'll come do something, come step in, mm-hmm. come pop up as a guest by people like, excited to see me. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, oh, probably, city CT. Yeah, I probably own a couple homes or properties. Okay. And uh, family's doing well. Great. Marriage is strong. Great. Yeah, you know I mean, mm-hmm. that's, that's, that's 20. No one's years. ever mentioned their marriage on this show. So, yeah, well, you know, I like it. <laughs> no one's yeah. ever been like, you know what? The marriage, baby. <laughs> I'm married. I don't think anybody hey, can, has anybody mentioned being no, married. No, yeah, really? You're yeah. the only one. I enjoy Tangerine. Yeah, I feel like you know she's a cool, a cool chick. Yeah, she's great. I'm, I'm, like, I'm just glad you finally saying it out loud. Yeah, <laughs> I oh, well, I always acknowledge her, especially when I do like interviews. But it's like, yeah, I feel like we'll be having some fun. Correct. Um, five years from now, I would love to get started on that show as far as like that long run on CBS joint. Mm-hmm. I probably would have produced. Uh, a couple of my own projects, like a couple of my film projects that mm-hmm. I've been like passion projects that yeah. I want to do for ten years now. <laughs> right, right. Um, yeah, still touring, building up the brand, probably trying to buy my my second property. Okay, and uh, traveling, man, okay. like enjoying life. Where, where we going? Oh man, you know the place I would like to go that I'd be putting off is Egypt because okay. it's so hot. I don't like hot places. I feel you. So I love I love going to London. Mm-hmm. Um, Did you go? You went, Rome, didn't you? Yeah, okay. London, Rome, Paris were our last trips before COVID. Um, I think I would like to do Egypt. I definitely want to do China. Never been to China. I'm down. Uh, Japan was fire. I wouldn't mind going back okay. there. And for some reason, I still want to see Hawaii. Okay. Yeah. Even though Bentley's like, yo, go to Puerto Rico. It's better and it's right. cheaper. I'm like, okay. But I still want to see Hawaii. Uh, ben told me that Hawaii was peasant traveling. <laughs> he was like, Hawaii? You do, you, you do Hawaii anytime. 
peasant traveling? Because he's like, he's like, yeah, it's expensive, but it's Hawaii. I was like, yeah, it's it's a whole foreign land to me. He was All like, of it, Hawaii. You could take me to. Where could I go that I'm like, this is really I'm in foreign. New York, bro. You can take Idaho. me anywhere. New York is fun. Oh, my God. Idaho. Ew. You know what? I take that back. <laughs> Every place is fun. Sorry, Idahoans. <laughs> Man. And that's that's what they call them. So it's hilarious. That's what it's with. Idahoans. Uh, <laughs> any place is fun as long as you have a budget to truly enjoy yourself. No doubt. Like, you could go to Texas, and you'll have the best time in Texas Very if you true. have a budget for Texas. Right, right. If you're just going, and you're like, hey, what they doing tonight? You're not going to have no fun. <laughs> right, right. Nowhere. Right. Yeah. Oh, great point. But th- those are, <clears throat> and it's so funny because if you would have asked me 10 years ago, where would I have seen myself now? It would have, I've pretty much done that with the exception of producing my films mm-hmm. that I want to do. It's like, oh, I'm going to be producing all my own stuff and I want to have uh, my own production company. I have it. Right. It's like, oh, I want to have like my own studio, like uh, Kev on stage. Mm-hmm. And it's like, man, shout out to him. But as I see him have it, I'm like, that's amazing. That's not, I don't think I want that. Yeah. Like, sometimes you I thought you the same see, thing. Yeah, yeah. You see your vision come to life through someone else. Right. And you're like. That's not it. That's not it. Because. That's how I felt about directing. When I saw that, I was like, that's, I don't want to do that. Bro, it's so yeah. much work. I do enjoy <laughs> directing, though. Yeah, I don't. But the, the facility in which we're in, amazing. It's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Cutting edge. Right. But it's so much to manage, in my opinion. Right. And then. I'm the type of person, and I'm not as lucky as a lot of people in this regard. I'm not the type of person that can do more than three things successfully, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So I can't be. This is creative. this is super. Sorry to cut you off. Yeah, but this is super important though because so many people try to do a bunch of different oh my things, God. and it's hard to focus. Yeah. But I always say that too. I got two things mm-hmm. I can be dope at. Yeah, that's it. Everything else, I'm a fuck up. I got three, and <laughs> yeah. I know that about myself. So it's like, for example, when I'm doing some of my own content, mm-hmm. in one at one moment, I'm directing, I'm acting, mm-hmm. and I'm like, cool, this is cool. Yeah. When I'm doing it, I've already written it. Mm-hmm. Uh, the editing is gonna come later. Right. You know, the casting process was before, mm-hmm. so I'm not having to do too much at once. Right. But if I was to have my own studio. Now I'm the head of this thing. I got to hire people who are not in the creative that are in this business. Right. And then I have to be funny. I know I can't do that. Right. So it's like major props to Kev. Mm-hmm. But for me, when it comes to even projects, I'm like, okay, I could direct this while I'm acting in it. I can still be funny, but I have to plan that. Right. Because if I'm able to just show up and be funny, oh, it's going to be incredible. I have no <laughs> responsibility. <laughs> right, right. But if you're like, yeah, come be funny and also help us break down the budget. It's right. Like, oh my I, God, I yeah, can't. That's, a, that's work. Yeah. Right. So um, seeing somebody else's vision similar to my own coming to fruition, it's like, all right, that might not have been what I wanted. Mm-hmm. So I realized about myself, I enjoy working for me. Mm-hmm. I enjoy going directly to my audience. I enjoy creating fun things with my audience. Right. Like, I'm one of those people who, like, I engage with my fan you base, do. bro. Like, I. We'd be doing movie nights. We'd be on a Twitch. We have a good time. Mm-hmm. I love that. Yeah. And a byproduct of that is I'm able to, um, I'm able to create revenue from those things right. while having fun, engaging with my fan base, and creating new relationships, which is dope. Right. So I I want to do more of that until the day I die. Dope. Yeah. I love it. It's the best, man. Where we at in ten years? Ten years. That will put me at forty five. Mm. It's so interesting. Where, where you I see literally it? have five and twenty down. <laughs> where we Ten at years where from we now, doing? bro. Well, this is when the potential kid comes into your life. Yeah. According to your twenty year mark. Yeah. I, okay. I get cracking on that. Well, I, hopefully it would be a little sooner. <laughs> you take the would, condoms off. <laughs> I would love to have the kid around forty. Uh huh. Yeah, you know I mean, and then ride that on out. But yeah, you don't want to be too old of a dad. Yeah. You know, I played it out. I'm like, any time pass, but then you see, David Letterman has a child. Well, you know what I'm when that kid needs him, he'll be dead. So, what's his name? Did too? Uh, who? Uh, 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 Indiana Jones. Oh, um, Harrison Ford. Harrison Ford yeah. was like, oh no, man. I'm the, I think I'm the other way. Uh, I think I'm thinking of him. What's his name? Modern Crazy Guys. 
You wild, Steve Martin. Steve wild Martin. and crazy guy. I think Steve Martin had his first kid. He was like 70. Hey. It was either it was one of them. It was one of them. And I was like, yo, what are you going to do for this kid? Hey, make a lot of videos that he can watch after I'm gone. <laughs> because you know why I say that, man? Having a child is very, you have to be very selfless. You have to be there for that child. You have to make sure that child learns everything. Because all you're doing is giving all your information mm -hmm. to the next generation. All right. I'm not ready because I'm not done living. Yeah. I'm and not saying like you would be done living to have a kid. You do. Because they definitely <laughs> it's over. enrich your life. And kind but of. I'm not done being selfish. Right. I love picking up and going when I want. Right. I enjoy seeing my friends' kids and be like, all right, cool. Your daddy right here. Go yeah. back to your daddy. I miss it. You know? Yeah. But uh the freedom. I'm not ready to no. have a child. I think uh of course I love my baby. Yeah. I I, I do it all over again. <laughs> I wouldn't. <laughs> Not now. Uh, because of that. You hitting your strap. I didn't get a chance to do it. I was like, I got to come back to my goals later on. But the way God worked it out for you was crazy because it made you hyper-focused. You were already focused. Mm -hmm. You were hyper-focused because you like, I have to make this happen now. I got this kid to think about. Right. So I think that's the that's the benefit. <sighs> Yeah, man. <laughs> so I was be like, man, man. I got lucky. It's not like I planned this. Yeah. I just ran into some really dope girls. Yeah. <laughs> man, you guys really invested in my future. <laughs> Thank you, ladies. <laughs> Dumb, bro. All right, 20 years. When you had a 20, what do you see? What's Oh, the 20 years is when I'm I'm traveling, bro. I'm yeah. traveling. I'm doing all the fun stuff. I'm part of a show. I, I'm telling you, the reason I say CBS show. My mom, first of all, I love CBS. Yeah. I've I've gotten an opportunity to be on CBS twice now, mm -hmm. right? Superior and Donuts was the other Superior one. Superior Donuts and All Rise, mm -hmm. right? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, which was a drama. Yeah. Huge for your boy. That was a great. bad guy. Yeah, yeah. I remember Huge you on the stand, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I love CBS because growing up, my mom would always watch these CBS shows. Mm -hmm. Clay be getting booked, guys. See in case you didn't catch that. Man. Book him. Anyway, so <laughs> my mom watched all these CBS shows, yeah. and they would be so dope that she would just be quoting them all the time. We used to watch stuff like The District mm -hmm. and, you know, all these other shows, and they were long running. Yeah. So you see a show like uh, CSI. Yeah. CSI went, like, what, 15 seasons? <laughs> yeah. And then they turned into something else, and they did right. spinoffs that did, like, nine or ten seasons. Right. And I was like, I want to be on a CBS show, yeah. a CBS drama. So the fact that I was able to do the All Rise drama – one showed me that I was right about drama mm -hmm. as far as, like, I can do drama. Right. And then, two, it showed me that, all right, I fit well in the CBS audience. Mm -hmm. So, less, you know. Right. So, I've always been uh, chasing that. Plus, no other network has really long-running dramas besides uh, Law & Order SVU. I was going to say, that was that NBC? Yes, yeah, NBC. Yeah. And the only other one, I think, is, what's her name? Show, Shonda Rhimes is showing ABC now. What, oh, I think uh, like, Grey's Anatomy. Yeah, I think they're like season 16 or something. Yeah, like that. but I think that's, that's about to wrap. So you got you got two shows right. on two different networks yeah. compared to CBS <laughs> right. that has several decades. They so. got what uh they got the uh, the show with Scott Bakula. Mm -hmm. Um No, it's crazy. NCIS. Yeah. The And I mean they have some of the longest running sitcoms. Yeah. You like Ooh, they, yeah. they stay Chuck on forever. Laurie, yes. Yeah. Chuck Lorre show, stay on until Chuck Lorre dies. Man, Chuck Lorre, holla at your boy. Man. Yeah, for real though. Sheesh. I'm like, man, this show's, this show's still on. I'm ready to be the new black guy, man. Let's, Come on, Chuck Lorre, it's let's time. Do it, Chuck. CBS is ready. <laughs> All right, here goes the uh, next question. Yeah. Uh, do you feel like you've given your very best effort yet? And if not, what's the leap to get there and what's stopping you? Uh, what's the leap to get there? Yeah. And what's stopping me are yeah. one and the same. Okay. Weight. Mm -hmm. My weight. That's mm -hmm. the only thing <laughs> that's ever held me back, bro. And it's so funny to identify that as the one thing that's holding you back yeah. and you don't do something about it. Yeah. It, because it's like, that's the Achilles heel. Yeah. So the leap to get to my goals is to simply lose the weight. Mm -hmm. And the thing that is holding me back is the weight. Hey, you know what's funny, though? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> because Clay would come in the rice room. <laughs> Out of control. 
Clayton would eat like a king. Yeah. When I say eat like a king. Delicious. Uh, Clayton would come in. There's a regular entree, the appetizer, the dessert. Clayton mm-hmm. would eat his dessert first. That was the first thing. Clayton eating his cake. Whatever it was, the dessert was the eating best. first. Oh, and then every time Clayton food came, he did the... Mm. 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 Clayton That's what would... you know is going to be good, boy. Because <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> you... Here's the thing. You see the food eat that you want like on the menu. A... When I say eat like a king, yeah. I mean, there's the whole table is covered. It's like, don't you touch that. I'll feed you that. to the dogs. It's mine, man. <laughs> and you know why that is? And... It's so unfortunate that LA is like this. Mm-hmm. Uh, but and I can't, I'm gonna use this as a crutch African culture, mm-hmm. but also how we grew up. If you ate food, if you were a large girl or guy and you ate a lot of food, you were a big person, mm-hmm. that showed how successful you were right. because you could afford all this food, <laughs> right, right? Right. And what's so funny is I, I've run into people who've known me for the 10 years or. 14, how long have I been out here since 07? Mm. What is that, 14 years? Yeah. So you run into people who've known you since you get out here. They're like, I remember when you were skinny. You're like, you mean, yo, no, no. You remember me when I was struggling, <laughs> young brother. And that is the difference, right? You knew poor CT. Come on, man. Right. I was so, all I could do was, this was my poor routine. <laughs> I would wake up. I would work out, mm-hmm. and the only reason I would work out is because I was killing time right. to get through the day. You know, I know. To get to the nighttime, <laughs> right. to perform, right. hopefully get $20, right. take that $20, go to Ralph's mm-hmm. the next morning after a workout, buy some chicken thighs right. for $7.99. Actually, they were $8.99. So buy some chicken thighs for $8.99. I would get uh, two packs of vegetables that were like a dollar each. Mm-hmm. And now I'd have spent like a uh, like ten eleven dollars, right? And then from that I would take the quarter, I would take a, like a quarter, fill up my gallon of water, mm-hmm. and then I got some Teddy Grahams as like a little snack, mm-hmm. and I had some peanuts, right? And then I had, yeah, I think those are all the things I had. And I bought seasoning, like seasoning salt, like you was lemon doing pepper, that. yeah, and all of that for twenty dollars, yeah, right? And this would be twenty dollars. I would take all of this back to the crib, and that's what I would eat. Yeah. So I would work out. As soon as I woke up, then I would uh, come home. I would eat the food, right? I think at that time I might have ended up getting some cereal that was like a dollar with like some rice milk or something because I was trying milks out uh, <laughs> before I found almond milk, which is delicious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, so I would eat the breakfast, which was the cereal, and then I would eat uh, some chicken and the vegetables around like four or five because I'm like, all right, if I eat right now, this will keep me not hungry while I'm out of the clubs. Right. And when I'm out of the clubs, I'm chewing gum right? because that's all I could afford. It was like, <laughs> I'm chewing gum to make me forget about the hunger. All right, right. And then I would go to sleep and do the same thing. Yeah, and yeah, then you start getting money and you're like, oh, I don't have to just eat this $8 pack of chicken thighs. Right, right. I can go eat chicken all day if I right, want. You know right. what I mean? So, uh, and don't get it twisted. I've always been a big guy, mm-hmm. like even growing up. But being in L.A. that first three years, it was so lean because I was oh, broke. We were all lean. Yeah, man. only person who wasn't lean was probably Tony Baker back then. That's when he was bigger. Well, you know what? He's lean now. Tony Baker was married. Yeah. Tony Baker had kids. And Tony Baker was a full-on adult yeah, before he started doing comedy. True that. He was 30-something. So, yeah, he was 30-something. So yeah. he had lived his life, bro. Right. And then he started doing comedy, and then he started getting lean because he right, wasn't making right, money. Right, right, So it's like, <laughs> of course, this is the struggle of a comedian. But now... Uh, he's older, but yeah. he looks super young. Looks super young. And uh, the reason he's lean is because he's like, you know what? I've had some health issues. <laughs> <laughs> Let me be healthy. So I get it. All right. But yeah, so that's the thing that's holding me back is the weight. I think the thing, I got to find a way to get back to the leanness mm-hmm mindset Mm -hmm. because now that i know i can just press my phone that's another thing we didn't have apps on our phone did not have apps that will bring you food come on (laughs) you know what i ain't eating after seven a day come 8 30 p.m you like let me order something real quick give you that coupon bro last night let me tell you what i had so i was like i hadn't eaten all day by the way yeah yesterday i uh i had streamed because i'd be on my twitch Mm -hmm. and then after i streamed Actually, before I streamed, I ate some leftovers from the night before, some vegetable stuff. Mm -hmm. I streamed, and I was like, man, I'm really hungry. Mm -hmm. Had to go help Tanj do something, and then I was like, forget it. I'm about to order me some veggie grill. Ordered the veggie grill at 10 p.m., ate it, loved it, knew I shouldn't have eaten it, even if it was veggie (laughs) grill. I'm like, man, I I broke the intermittent fast. You did. And... Here we are. <laughs> so, but at least it was yeah. a healthier option of. Oh uh, yeah, because I didn't. Yeah. 
I didn't eat a whole cheesecake and been like, yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna eat after. Something. For your birthday, bro? Oh uh, yeah, my birthdays be, uh, it'd be crazy. Here's man. here's what it is, Cam. It's crazy. Every birthday for Chaz, yeah. he wants the exact same thing, a cheesecake. He doesn't want anything else. He will eat that cheesecake from the middle. He's not even cutting slices at this so point. So it's just for him. Just for him. Okay. He's eating his whole cheesecake, and I'm like, bro, your stomach is about to blow. Like yeah. you about to destroy the bathroom, and he's like. Yeah, man, it's my birthday. It's my I'm birthday, like, all right. Man. And he wanted right. another one after he finished it. Yeah, I, I I did. I think last year was the only year I didn't do three. I did three Oof. cheesecakes. What kind of cheesecake? Different ones. They're all different. Okay. Uh, I'll do three different cheesecakes They're a day. Different. I haven't been able to finish all three yet. I finished two before. Uh, I finished two twice. And then last year, it was hard to get stuff, so I only did the one. Uh, the yo, made, yo, yo made it for me. Your mama make you one? Yo. No, no, did she make me one? I know who yo is. I thought I you said, said yo, yo mama. mama and make you one. No, uh, no, 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 no. I don't, I don't ask her to do nothing. It's yo, your yo birthday. Wants, but yo wants to do it, you know? That's a, that's one of the two cheesecakes. Nah, my mom and she. I, I don't, and you know, I don't ask for nothing because I would just go order cheesecakes. I'm like, I don't. Didn't she send you one before she moved out here? No. Your mom? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Hmm. Mm-hmm. See, I can't sit and eat the same thing in a sitting like that. Like that's too much at once. Like, I can same. eat like, a slice of cheesecake, and then like, I could eat. I can continuously eat different a variety of foods at the same time. I can't eat like no, one thing. The, well, no, well, can't do that. So like, like last year, I think, or the year before, I think I did like uh, some kind of like cinnamon toast crunch cheesecake, and then there's like a, I did like a peanut butter one or like a blueberry. There's di- different. One. I've had a ton of different ones by now. So. But each bite is something different. And I'll mix it up. You know, I'll start with this one, and then I'll go mm. to another one throughout the day, and I'll be like, you know what? Let me go back to, mm. you know, I had I did a red velvet one. It's just all different ones. Mm. You, did, you just do a bunch of different things, and then I'll have, it's amazing. I, okay, so this is how I do with sweets. Like a bathing man. cheesecake, guys. That's disgusting. I definitely enjoy <laughs> sweets, but I like my sweets after I've eaten the food. Yeah. Like, I'll have... Ooh, oh, it's, oh, it's this burger, or oh, it's yeah. this chicken, or this salmon. And then you have the reward of dessert. Right. I can eat that dessert yeah. every day with a different meal. <laughs> right. But I can't just eat that dessert. Have you tried it? Oh, oh what no. Is your, what is your dessert that you could eat all the time? Oh, my God. Let me tell you something about peanut butter cake, brother. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Woo! Tangerine. I don't need to go into specifics. She got me a peanut butter cake the other week, and I ate a slice of... After every meal, yeah. oh, it was so, yeah. vegan. It was amazing. Oh man, I meant to bring these cupcakes in today. I, I gotta start eating vegan more. Um, oh yeah, you tan just super lean. Yeah, she's lean. What do y'all be eating different? Y'all don't, y'all don't eat the same. Oh, I eat that meat. Hella pause. Hella pause. Boy, I be eating that meat. <laughs> meat, baby. She be eating vegetables. <laughs> she be eating stuff with, <laughs> uh, man. She just, she eats perfectly. Uh, what is wrong with you, bro? And I be having breads. <laughs> uh, yeah. Breads, sugar. That was the hardest thing. I'm potatoes. not a sugar, because I'm not a sweets guy. I'm mm. a I'm a salty, like, you give me fries. I'm like, uh, it's hard for me to turn down. That's why I like the cheesecakes come like once a year. I don't eat cheesecakes yeah. or cakes or candy at all, ever. Uh, I don't think you've ever seen me drink a soda, never. I don't ever drink. It's only water, coffee, or tea. It's the only thing I ever Interesting. drink. Interesting. Yeah, I've never drink. I haven't had pop since high school. So what do you mean? Just you know, because a lot of it is like, you know, you know, you you know your body. This, so when I lost all that weight before, I yeah. got a chance to really learn what I don't eat well, what mm. I, what I don't process well. So like, I don't process rice well. Mm. I, I don't process because anything uh, you'll see like a, it's potatoes, you'll see like a huge influx. I'm like, damn, mm. dog. And then like, uh, cause you know I did keto the first time, yeah, right. So um, keto was great, but still like I realized how much how many carbs are in meat still, and like all these other things. You know, it was like, uh, and then I did this fast. Uh, me and Benton did this fast. It was crazy. Um, we did a 21 day fast where it was like nothing but fruits and vegetables. Uh, raw foods cleanse. Yeah, but you could only have it in a smoothie oh, for the first week. You couldn't it. eat raw foods at all. Wow! And then it was like smoothies uh, never fill me up though. I can't. Never. I was hot, but it, but you could have as many smoothies as you wanted. But you just, but it was <sighs> yeah. Don't... And then it was no like I was I was feeling bad, and then I felt great the next week. Or maybe like five days of feeling like shit. Then I felt amazing. I felt great. I was like, "Woo! Is this what this is?" But I was always going to sleep by like six or seven because <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't count. do caffeine. My body was like, "Hey, man." <laughs> You're yeah. setting this down, and then it was like, "But your body needs sleep." And I'm like, "We don't, we can't afford sleep, bro. Like, like we don't sleep is for rich people. Rich people get to sleep in, and I, I don't. We don't get to do that. But like, you know, I just got a chance to really learn. Like, hey, your body likes this stuff. So then it's just about being consistent, mm-hmm. and that's why I fail. 
Because mm. then I'll lose. Like right now, I'm down like seven pounds. Nice. But which is cool. But then I go like, all right, dog, how long is this streak gonna go for you? Got fuck it, it up. Because once you fuck it up, you know, it's, it's hard over. to yeah. I'm the same way. I remember, all right, so m- let me tell you about this intermittent fasting. Yeah. Cam, you understand me? Your small brother. Congratulations. Yeah, Cam is super thin. You made it. <laughs> no, uh, I stayed. I stayed here. You know what I'm saying? This is this is a blessing, bro. Um, I looked at the scale last week. I was like, I'm starting intermittent fasting. All right. Two days of doing this perfectly. Yeah. I had lost two pounds. Yeah. I saw it going. I was yeah. like, oh, I'm doing the right thing. All right. I ate late once that third day. Yeah. I have not looked at that scale again. <laughs> so it's like you see the progress, and it's it's almost like mentally you're like, oh, I know I can do it. Yeah. I can do it. So now I'm going back to the bush. So so what I found out for me, <laughs> mm-hmm. it was not about being, because it was like, have, can you have a routine? Yeah. Do you? This is part of your daily lifestyle. This mm-hmm. is your routine now, right? So then, you know, when Izzy came, mm-hmm. all that whole routine, all that was gone. Everything. The, the time to sleep. I was, I haven't slept in two and a half years, Mm-mm. right? That's like, it was like, why are you so tired? I'm like, the work, her, like, you know, she's just now starting to sleep throughout the night, which people are like, oh, she's two and she's not sleeping. I'm like, no, she would wake up. You know, she'll come bust in our room and shit. Izzy don't give a shit. She'll be like, oh, y'all fucking in. boom, watch out, move over, put a towel down, I'm slaying Put shit. a towel down, I'm slaying She don't give a damn, so... You know, like, but then when your routine gets off, because I was like, hey, dog, when you work out, like, blah, 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 blah. So, you, you know, going up and down, trying to find mm-hmm. the next perfect routine, I was like, but once you stay there, then you're good. Mm-hmm. Then mm-hmm. it's just about, no, this is, we don't eat these foods. We don't do that. So then it's like getting back to that daily consistent routine. Because that's all it is, of course, is just doing something consistently, right? We know yeah. that. That's, we know that. But then it's, it's the fuck up days when you go like, ah, oh, now nah, I got to get back. Or I heard I was working out consistently. Uh, some weeks ago, right, mail a month ago, I hurt my back. Mm. So I was out for like maybe four or five days. Remember that cam when you were here when I was like talking about my back? It was a couple weeks ago. I was just recovering, I think, then. Mm. And then uh, Memorial Day is when it happened. And then I haven't worked out since. Mm. My my routine was broken. And I was like, damn, dog, it's hard. To, I'll do it maybe like a couple days. And then I'm like, well, mm-hmm. let me start back light, do some push-ups. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? mm-hmm. And See, then my I, issue is I go too hard the one day, and then I oh, feel you're sore shit. Sore. All the soreness. Yeah. Terrible. I'm like, no. I can't work out because I'm sore. Yeah. You know yeah. what you do? Man, I'm an expert on this though. Like when it comes to that gym and lifting and even calisthenic stuff, oh, professional. The mm. only thing that's ever stopped me was my eating. And I know really now yeah. that I don't process bread and potatoes well. Right. But for you, say you want to do eight different exercises. You're like, I'm about to do all of these. Do three. That'll give you something to look forward to the next day. And then mm. the next day, do See, I don't two. Look forward to it. Uh, <laughs> but here's what you do. Well, first you gotta find something fun that you like. I like yeah. lifting. I don't like running at all. Same. Right. So I'll do my lifts. What's up, bro? Uh I'll do my lifts and stuff like that. And then uh but but what you do, here's a trick for when you're sore. If anybody out there who starts working out and you're sore the next day, you set a time to work out every day. Mm-hmm. Whether now I tell the people this whether you go to the gym or not. You can go, get up, mm-hmm. go there. I don't care if you sit outside your car mm. the entire time and you talk about and you're on your phone. You make that time for that. Mm. Because then most likely you'll go sometime. Mm. But all you gotta do is like I always say like as baby says, be disciplined enough to go. I like that. You know? So even if cause man, I'm you might be times I didn't sit outside the gym and be like, I don't feel like working out. But then I was like, shit, I'm wasting the day. And I was like, well, hey, you got to stay here for two hours. Mm. That's true. You got to stay here for two hours, whatever your time for the gym is. You I used to work at the gym, so I hate them. Oh, I feel I you. I had to get up at 4.30 a.m. Oh, yeah. For a summer. Oh, yeah. To open the gym for these people. And I was Ooh, like, I For can't. these what? people? Because you're like, why are you here this early? Who are you trying to impress? How dare you work on yourself <laughs> and your personal. And it was a YMCA, so you get, get, get a br- plethora of people oh, coming yeah. into that. I got the old people coming in before dawn. It's a lifestyle, bro. Yeah, My mom will tell me every day. She's like, I went to the gym this day four. Yeah, I'm like, oh, nice. that's amazing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, my thing is now I'm out of pocket. Like, right. I got to, I have to. Yeah. I have to. Because now, yeah. like you said, this is the thing stopping me from getting to my goal. And if you look at your goal and you like, you could have me. Yeah. If you just did, like, when we talk about work, bro, we talk about work ethic, I excel in every single thing that I say I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. The only thing that's been keeping me down is the weight. Right. And this has been something I've been battling with the weight thing my entire life. Me too. But realistically, where it's been, like, serious, I can tell you my first show that I did with Bentley was 20... 
2011, 2012, 2011, mm. 2012, right? It was my mm-hmm. crazy roommate. And wardrobe hit me like, hey, do you have a suit? And I'm like, no, nah, I got no suit at the time. You know what I'm saying? They're like, all right, cool. We'll size you for a suit. They didn't size me. They brought me a suit. Mm-hmm. The suit was so tight mm-hmm. and it was high waters. Mm-hmm. Like high waters when you, you're flooding, your you're pants right. are too short. And we hid it. But I remember being in that suit and I said, Oh, I'm gonna show everybody. I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop this weight. I'm gonna be this suit gonna be loose on me next time. Yeah, yeah. and it, I never, <laughs> I never followed through with it. All so right. it's like, that's almost ten years, right. of me but bullshit. It, but with in the those ten years, me and you both have gone bigger and smaller. Yes, we, we're like, always up with this accordion. Yeah, maybe. man. <laughs> we're like, yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Uh, my biggest fear, yeah, of me, uh huh, ever is not reaching my goals because of me. Same. You know, I was like, I don't want to be the reason I don't reach my goals. Hey, it can be because I'm black. Fine. It can Great be. Point. It can be because uh, the pandemic, whatever. Mm-hmm, whatever. Mm-hmm. It can't be me. If I'm the reason that I can't reach my goals and I don't deserve it. That was always my thing about even taking away all your excuses. I love that philosophy. Yeah. So I would like that's that's I was like, hey, man, if you try your best, if you try your very best and it just doesn't happen, fine. Mm-hmm. I was like, I'm willing to go back to Michigan after I try my very best. Mm. I go go stand in line and work at the factory somewhere mm-hmm. if there's mm-hmm. any left over there. But I was like, if you tried your very best and you can't do it, fine. That's if you reach your very But I also knew if I did my very best, I could do it. Right? You can. I was like, of course. I was like, if I actually get out my own way, um, set myself up for success, get away mm. with all my excuses. And then it was like, great, it's on you now, bro. You got no more excuses, Chaz. No more excuses. Is, you're either going to do it or you're not. And then no like, more excuses. Then I was like, all right. And so then it's like time, uh, money for this. It was like, yeah. Because, you know, so me and yo, when we first got together, it was mm. like, great, let's let's invest in our health. Like, yeah. let's go buy these foods. Let's, let's have these people deliver food to us. I was like, let's just spend more money in getting healthy than mm. it was in, in um, you know, outside stuff. Yeah. Because it's like, oh, you can spend this money to go eat or you can spend this money to have healthy food delivered to you mm. or whatever it was. You know, we just did that. And then the baby came and all that went out. The baby came. And <laughs> well, let me tell you, y'all <laughs> actually... Things. Y'all both met at the same time because y'all were both doing something mm-hmm. with your health. Uh, that's how we that's bonded. Amazing. That was yeah. uh, the beginning of the bond, and you know, how's your mama? Good, man. She's really good, Love bro. Your mama. My mama always. I'm like they're little friends. Look at that, man. <laughs> they're hanging out playing cats. <laughs> yeah, you were like, yeah, yeah. Just have a little play date for y'all. Got a little play date, man. Because <laughs> it's like you know, when we were kids, your my mom loves you, bro. Say, I love your mom. My mom loves you. She's the greatest. How that, how that sweetie Clayton doing? Man, she's the best. Man. I'm like sweetie Clayton. Oh, you're hilarious, Larry. You don't know this cat. <laughs> you don't know this cat. <laughs> All right, last question. You ready? Go ahead. All right, you're on your deathbed. Oh. Jesus, that got yeah. morbid. Quick. Well, you did twenty years already. You got a couple years in there. You Jesus. had a good run. I'm dead at, at fit. Okay. No, I'm, no, no, no. This is your. How old do you want to be when you die? You know what? Realistically, I would love to be in my nineties. Yeah, I said one hundred and six. I'm gonna be way too. I'm gonna be a, a, a skeleton. With by medical be technology, gross. we'll probably all live too. Something. Yo, like if I go. could, here's the thing. Healthily, if they could Healthily. make medical technology to where. By the time I'm 90, they yeah. they've got it to where I can either a be frozen, right. or b have my consciousness into a younger yes. body, fam, or an android. I'm <sighs> down with that. I want to be a robot. I still want to feel. Well, uh, an android by then you should, right? Isn't that the whole point we of being android? The, the neuron the and sensors, mechanical yeah. neuron receptors to your brain. So yeah, that's the android part. Not a robot. Movie? An android. What was the movie with Bruce Willis where they had done that? Where it was like. Well, they didn't transfer the consciousness. It was like they were all these avatars of themselves, and then the real person of them were in their apartments. Boris Kojo was in it. I don't know. In the comments, I'm sure somebody will. Somebody would do it. Yeah, I don't get that many comments. Hey man, but I get a few. Hey bro, and I appreciate you guys. Those few are. Let me say real quick. I appreciate man the people who pull up. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. It's big. It's big. It's dope because I see it growing, which is cool. Every community, bro. It's about building a community. Yeah. I don't care about building. Fans, you know how many people are fans of mine? Right. Hey man, I'm a fan of you, bro. Like you're not a fan of a fan of me is somebody that's like, hey man, I like your stuff. Yeah. Where, while I appreciate that, right. I want the community. Right. The community are people that they like you when you grow your hair out, when right. you cut your hair, if you big, if you small, if you're doing this show, if you're not doing that show, right. if you're making videos, and not those are people that are in a community that are riding with right. you. Right, they rock with you, and that is what I feel like beyond any of the amount of followers that I have, those are the people, and it's a select few. I might have I might have about a hundred p- 
people in my community mm-hmm. that are like, yo, every time I go live, they in there with me. Right. Every time I'm doing That's Twitch, dope. they in there. That's great. When I post a video, the comments, I see same names. Yeah. That's the community. Yeah. So whatever people are doing that for you. I see that now, and community. I see that I see that growing. You know. Yeah, man. Growing. I think me and Cam started this uh, over a year ago, mm-hmm. and then COVID happened. Mm-hmm. And I think then I might have had 100 subscribers. Yeah, you had something like that. Maybe. You have to look at your channel. So I think it's like 650 now. We're almost Congrats. at 7. Thank you, dog. And so, but that was also with being like, being on daddy issues consistently and, mm-hmm. and, and actually just kind of like following through, you know, outside of like being busy. So that's something that I'm also trying to refocus on. Like, it's, it's hard because I go like writing, 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 mm-hmm. writing, creating, 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 mm-hmm. writing, writing. And then it's like, hey, are you trying to do this thing or not? Because you yeah. got to take it seriously if you're going to do it. Like Time you, management, like you said with yeah. the gym. So if then I I'm always like, all right, well, yo, make make the time for it, bro. Because I'll think about it like after the fact or I hit Cam like, hey, Cam, last minute, do you got such and such, right? And I'm like, no, you got to start putting that thought yes. in of like this is something that I I grew this already mm-hmm. you know we put in the hours mm-hmm. so I go like dude people are going to call you for work mm-hmm. I haven't had to look for work in, a in some years so then I go like now go put that same effort you don't have to put all of it but hey take 80% out of here you mm-hmm. can do that now yeah I'm coasting right <laughs> and then go put it in here so bro when we talk about community I'll use this as an example I watched Tangerine and BT Kingsley do this right they have these discords, right? Mm-hmm. They got a discord. A discord is uh, basically a social media app where you get to talk to all of the people that are following you mm-hmm. without any algorithms. Mm-hmm. You get directly to them. If they're following you, they've joined, you're in there. So uh, here I was. I had just hit a million followers on Facebook. Mm-hmm. I watched uh, BT Kingsley. Thanks. I watched BT what Kingsley. Up, bro? Keon Poli being a creep. What's up, player? I ain't got my glasses on. So <laughs> I watched BT Kingsley and I watched Tangerine both. While I hit a million, mm-hmm. I watched them both have these discords. They might, at the time, have both had, Tangerine might have had a uh, hundred people at the time. This was last year. She yeah. might have had a hundred people. BT might have had 50. Mm-hmm. All right? Mm-hmm. I watched BT do uh, his Vincent Dracula Jones <laughs> live on Instagram, DJing in the pandemic. Right, right. And I watched Tangerine host her shows Tuesday and Thursday. Shoot your shot on Thursday, her mm-hmm. talent show Tuesday. And I watched all these people that are supporting them, yeah, right? Yeah. They came into their lives. They talked with them. They interacted with them. Yeah. And then I saw BT's birthday come up. Mm-hmm. BT's birthday came up. And his Kingsley crew, mm-hmm. which <laughs> was that 50 people at the yeah. time, gifted him something crazy like twelve hundred dollars some do rags some tank tops like all the stuff he was rocking for the bdj and they all popped into his live to tell him how much that he helped them during the pandemic wow and then tangerine her birthday just passed on the 30th Mm -hmm. her her and her fan base is so much bigger now she went from like from like uh two hundred thousand on facebook to now she's at like six hundred thousand Almost seven hundred thousand. Doing and numbers. Her her audience came in and told her how much they loved her. Right. They got her this crazy amount of gifts and all of these things, and they were just saying like, "Yo, we appreciate you." And I watched my million followers. Yeah. During that time, do nothing. <laughs> right. So during like I think after BT's birthday, I started really creating like really getting into Twitch. Yeah. Right building my audience up and building a community. Yeah. Like I don't want it to be, hey man, I'm a fan of your stuff. I'm like, oh thanks, user six six seven. Like I <laughs> want right, when right. you come in, I'm like, oh what's up, Cam? How you right. doing, man? How's your mom? Like I want that. And that's yeah, what I yeah, have. Yeah. That's dope. So my birthday came mm-hmm. around. Beyond my birthday coming around, man, one of my homies, man, next Luther sent me this care package with with uh things that our moments that we had from my Twitch. Wow. Then my birthday came Dope. along. Everybody just came in and just giving me all these heartfelt messages. No. And I was like, this is what it's for. Yeah. The community. Yeah. So if you say you got 600 people on YouTube. Yeah. Bro, 600 people on YouTube is amazing. If yeah. you have these people that you could just reach out to and say, yo, thank you. Get to know them. Yeah. Because you're going to be big enough to where you're not going to be able to get to know everybody. Right, right. But right now you can. Right. Man. And I love that. And I love this the same people. And I love they go like, yo, this was dope. Oh, last episode was this. Like that's yeah. that's super super dope. Something that I didn't think would happen. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you do it and you're like, oh man, this is cool. But then you're right. like, oh, that's actually really cool. And people are like, Yeah, yo, where's next? Because I missed two weeks. And then they were like, We're hey man. 
Hey, man. What? I was like, I was working. I don't really give a shit. You give a shit about work. We better get your ass back in that studio. <laughs> I know. Bro, people love Chaz. Like, you're a lovable dude. You know what? Do you remember? I, I don't know if Cam know. In the podcast of Daddy Issues, when I first came out, it was either you either loved me or you hated me. Really? It, oh, it was. Yeah, it was definitely two. There were two. It was. The Chaz camp and an anti Chaz <laughs> camp. Yeah, it was. You loved me. Because I get on and I say ridiculous shit. I'm like, I'm just here for jokes. I'm going to get in here. I'm going to say ridiculous stuff. And uh, yeah, it was, it was that, though. And then I think I get a lot more love now. But yeah. in the beginning, bro. We hate this. Dude. Who's this bald fuck? Really? No, it was, it was pretty bad. And then, like, you know, I laugh at everything because they don't know me, right? You can't take it personally. They're strangers. That's a good attitude. I can't have strangers hurt my feelings. How fragile am I? That's a fact. Right? I'm very fragile. Yeah. I have let them destroy <laughs> me in the past. I'm like, I don't know you. Why would you hurt my feelings? All right, let's do this real quick, and then you got to go. Okay. All right, you're on your deathbed. We're uh, back to this. All I'm right. sorry. You already talked to your entire family. You're good with everybody. Okay. You said your last words to them. Uh, you've accomplished everything on your list. Every single thing you've ever thought you'd do, you did. That's a blessing. Yeah. Um, so now a reporter comes up to you, and he's like, CT, uh, before you before you go to the great beyond, what are three pieces of advice you tell people that you leave to the world? Um, the first piece of advice is always believe in you. And I'll expound upon it by saying, there are so many people that won't believe in you yeah. and you'll look to them to believe in you and you'll wonder why people don't believe in you. And then you'll, you'll start counting yourself out. Like, well, maybe they don't believe in me because of this, or they don't believe in me because of that, or because I'm not as shiny as this person, or because I'm not like their favorite, this person. Mm -hmm. And that is going to happen. So, you should believe in you. So at least you got one person that does. At the very least. Um, the next thing I would say is follow your dreams. Like my entire life, even sitting here talking to you right now yeah. in this building, I wouldn't be here if I didn't follow my dreams. No doubt. I would be in Detroit doing God knows what. But I think you're like me. You've had the same goal since you were a kid. Yes. Like like saying, I remember I was five and I saw Living Color. I was like, I'm going to do that. <laughs> I was like, I'm doing that. Whatever the Damon's doing right now, I want to do that. I saw Martin Lawrence. Yeah. And I said, Whoop, that's, that's it. That's my life. What, that's what I'm doing. Yeah, man. They yeah. say about a bell, clinched it for LA. <laughs> that's when you were coming out. I saw Zach Morris. I said, I want to go out there. Is that how they doing it? <laughs> yeah, but the third piece of advice would probably be enjoy the journey. Like mm -hmm. be grateful for the journey. Because yeah. that's hard to do it when is. you're in it. You're in it, but you know what? Because you look back and it's all fun and games, but yeah. in it, it's tough. I can't say that. Well, you're right to yeah. a certain extent, but when I started out here, it was more so me being like, you know what? I am really poor. Yeah. But I'm not going to be poor forever. All right. I always knew that. All right. I also remember uh, sleeping on uh, Real Battle's couch. Mm -hmm. It's a real battle. Real is amazing. Yeah, great. Slept dude. on this couch in Glendale at the time, like my first month out here. Yeah. And then I lived on Vanessa Graddock's floor. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> for for three months. <laughs> uh, but living with Real Battle, he came and told me one night, he was like, Hey man, I'm about to go out of town and my roommates, you know, they don't want you here while I'm not here. So you gotta, you know, find somewhere to go. So I come back. I'm like, ah. And I remember leaving his crib, going out for comedy, coming back, getting off the bus in Glendale, and I got on the curb. And I got on my knees and I prayed and I said, and I start crying as mm -hmm. I was praying. And I was like, God, just work it out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Later that night, I ended up calling Vanessa because Corey Holcomb had made a joke. He was like, yo, you need to be trying to stay with Vanessa because she's single. She ain't got nobody. She'll let you stay in the crib. I'm like, oh, that's hilarious. She laughed. We laughed. And I was like, hey, can I, can I stay on your floor? You know what I mean? Yeah. And she was like, yeah. But Great. Uh, it's like during these moments, I always looked at my life like an origin story of a superhero. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, these are the things that have to happen for me to become this person. True that. So no doubt. who I am right now is who I knew I would become. And I'm still not done becoming him. Right. That I appreciated these moments. I loved when all of us would go to Denny's after a show. Good times. And we would be dirt poor. And if I slid somebody $5. Yeah. Cause I had ten, right. so they could get the two, four, six, eight menu. <laughs> right, right. I knew we were all gonna laugh about this when we were in our mansions right, or right, right. driving our dream cars. And the journey is something that you have to appreciate because none of Denny's will never come back. Right. I mean, there might be a moment where 
we all say, hey, guys, let's go to Denny's. Right. But for all of us collectively, we live completely different lives. Right. We have different things going on in our lives. Um, the sched- We have schedules now right. where we're busy. we got to wake up for stuff. And at that time, I often took those moments in. Like mm-hmm. when we would all share a laugh, I would be like, <sighs> because I knew one of these would be the last time that we would all be together in that sense. When that picture DC posted the other mm-hmm, day, mm-hmm. I'm like, bro, I look at everybody in that picture, except for one person, is doing amazingly. Mm-hmm. I look at everybody like, wow, we are all really blessed to be doing what we want to do right. and successfully, and this was one of the last moments that we didn't know was one of the last moments. Right. So you got to enjoy the journey because when you get to where you want to get to, you're not going to have those same friends. Right. You're not going to have the same uh, the same people in the regard that you wanted to have them in. So you got to enjoy when you did. No doubt. That's, I mean, super true. Yeah, man. That's great. That's a great reflection, Clayton yeah. Thomas. Hey, brother, you know. Uh, or to you people, CT. That's to you people. To me, I see you oh, people. <laughs> Yo, man, thank you, bro. Hey, that man. was great, man. Come on, bro. Hey, you. That was great. Listen, Chaz, I don't wake up early. <laughs> and you said I didn't give you no smoke either. You did it. You were like, not hey, at you. all. <laughs> <laughs> not a piece. <laughs> not a zero. Not a us. Uh, I said, what time? You said nine. I said, all right. Anything for you, bro. I appreciate that. Come dog. on, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and see my society. Check Clayton. Uh, follow him on. Uh, what's it? I don't know your Twitch. It's fine. Is it, CT is, is dope. Just Google Because you CT changed is it. dope. Because it was Team CT for the longest. It was. And you know what's so funny, man? I, it was Team Clayton Thomas. Yeah. And then I got tired of people being too familiar. Like, <laughs> first of all, I hate when people call me uh, Clayton or Clay. That's my father's name. Yeah, Clay's weird. And it was like. I never. I couldn't see you as a Clay. Yeah. Like, if a girl calls me, I ain't tripping. But it's like right. guys would do it. Yeah. I remember the dude said, and then people would, <laughs> instead of calling me CT, they'd be like TC. And I'm like, how do you Hilarious. fuck up two <laughs> let The C comes before the T. <laughs> Like, do you think my first name is is Team? <laughs> Terrence, you know Terrence Clayton. So I immediately was like, yo, CT is dope on everything. Yeah. Like, you can't butcher CT that. CT is dope on everything. Yeah. And it's worth it, man, from the sketches to the, man, I'll be back. <laughs> Thank you, man. <laughs> to, the, to the Twitch, um, which I'm going to try to get into more and more. You should. I you just, would love Twitch. It's hard because I can't talk when I'm playing because the kids sleep. Uh, so I want to be able to talk shit and I can't yet. Um, but we got to run and go do the daddy issues because um, I'm taking up too much time. Oh, thank you, man. Sorry. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, hey. double, double booked in hey, here. Hey, brother. Get out, no Clayton. Idea. Thank you so Man, thank you, bro. You were great. Come on, man. Thanks for having me, brother. Oh, no. Anytime you ask, I'm, I'm there, bro. Appreciate you, fam. Daddy issues. They bought, man, I got to get up out of here. <laughs>